Okay everyone, welcome back to the channel for another video on Gran Turismo 7. I'm back with a race from last week's Daily Race C at Daytona in Group 3, driving the Veyron. The Veyron was the car to use here for the top speed, obviously with the oval section hitting high speeds in Group 4. So the majority of people were using that. We've got Mick Alzal, otherwise known as TRL Lightning in P1. Great to see him back racing. An absolute legend of Gran Turismo, a previous GT World Champion. One of the fastest drivers you'll ever come across on Gran Turismo and he's not really been playing that much recently but he's managed to get he actually managed to get the world world's fastest time on this time trial for this race so clearly still got the pace but let's see what happens in this race we've got Turismo in P2 another very very fast driver and obviously Mikhail there in P1 so let's see how we get on in this race and see if we can fight towards the end now one thing with this race is it was quite a good idea to work with each other in terms of slipstream, especially at the start of the race. So for the first few laps, what you want to try and do is build up the gap to the drivers behind and give yourselves a bit of a gap to pull away from the other cars. So in an ideal situation, what we want to happen is we want to break away from P4 and then be able to fight ourselves with uh, Mikau and Turismo there in P2 towards the last few laps. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to work together and we're going to obviously try not to battle too much in these early laps. So what you'll see me doing is staying to the left here. I'm going to make it clear that I'm not going to go for a move. We're going to work together and not really try and overtake each other. It's all about just trying to break away from P4. And you can see there P4 starting to fade off already there. You can see that he's dropped down to half a second back. And now we've got to go into the power section. Now the car behind is the Ferrari. So that car needs to be extremely close to the slipstream or he is going to fade every time we get on these straights. You can see he's already dropping down to six temps and we're gaining on Turismo. And Turismo is obviously gaining on Mikhail there in P1. Now we're coming up to the bus stop chicane. Very tricky chicane on this track. You, if you get it right, you can gain quite a lot. If you make a little mistake, you can actually lose a lot for the back straight. So breaking in between the, the number two and the um, number one board there, there's a nice little um, hazard warning signal there. You can use, it goes either yellow or blue for obviously the warning post. And I use that as a reference into that corner. Getting a reasonable exit, but not the best there. You can see that Turismo have got a much better exit than ourselves. However, what you can see is the cars behind have faded. It looks like they started battling a little bit into that bus stop and they are going to lose this slipstream. You can see 1.4, 1.5 within you know another second there and they're just dropping off massively now. So with that slipstream pretty much broken, you can see there 1.8, 1.9 seconds now as we go over the line. It's time to just carry on working with P1 and P2 until we can get a little bit further on into this race and then hopefully we'll start getting some good battling going. So you can see again into turn one, Mikhail runs a little bit wide then. He's actually gone all the way over the grass, cutting some grass there. Massive understeer for Mikhail and he's going to get half a second penalty and some dirty tyres in that corner. So we're going to go around the outside of Mikhail and try and get into Turismo slipstream. And Mikhail is going to have to be very cautious there behind us there with them dirty tyres into these corners. Just be a bit cautious on the brake. So he's going to drop a little bit further back. You'll see that on the Delta as we go into the braking zone for this corner. You can see we've got a little bit more grip than him. And yeah, you can see straight away as we get on the throttle, you'll see Mikhail's car just getting a little bit of understeer with that dirty tyres. He's going to drop down to about half a second behind us. And then into this next corner, he'll still have a little bit of dirty tyres. So into this left-hand corner, you can see still not got the grip out of the car and drops down to about seven temps. And now we've got the slipstream. We're going to pull away slightly through here, but Mikhail absolutely sends it through this bus stop. So to get back into the slipstream, keep an eye on that um, delta there. Going into the bus stop, she came, I do it reasonably well. We actually gained a bit on there on Turismo. However, Mikhail just sends it and gains two temps instantly. And that gives himself... The ability to get back in a bit of slipstream which is going to be needed because he's got half a second penalty that he's going to have to take just a few meters up the road here in the penalty zone so keep an eye on this now he's under half a second he's going to take that penalty we're gaining on p1 and there's no point us fighting with turismo now so i'm going to try and work with him to see if we can break away and you know make this a two car race so into the braking zone we're going to give him a little bump draft there and then onto the brakes on the warning signal and then just try and rotate this car. Be very careful on the brakes with the Veyron. I was riding the brake with the accelerator slightly going into that corner to stabilize it, to stop it with that over rotation. You can see there, Mikhail just about hanging on 1.1 seconds behind us, still within the slipstream range though. The slipstream range is actually about 1.5, although you can actually pick it up a slightly bit the tiniest amount over 1.5 you still get it but looking on this camera angle now you can see that the gap is massively developing between p3 and p4 
it looks like the battle is definitely going to be on for the podium between the three cars on screen at the moment the, the other cars seem to have dropped off way too much now to fight so keep working like this and then we can really have a good battle towards the end so again you can see sitting in the Cyprium Turismo Macau pushing behind us to get back up behind us and again Gran Turismo looking amazing on these replay cameras you can see taking a tight line through there back into that slipstream two tenths behind Turismo and Macau about eight tenths behind us again there so now we're coming back into that bus stop chicane can we try and get a really good exit to see if we can you know push away more from the P4 and P5 in this race so again we're going to get close to Turismo but we might be a bit too close to the braking zone so we're going to lift off there we're not going to give him a bump draft there because we're too close to the braking zone you don't really want to bump draft him into that bus stop chicane that close but you can see again Macau absolutely nailing the bus stop again behind us there and now three tenths behind us and we're three tenths behind p1 so again pretty equal between one p1 two and three with the gaps and you can see we're really starting to pull away from the other car so we're skipping ahead a little bit now to the end of lap four as we both we were all driving around pretty much static in that lap just working together not really fighting too much and you can see the gap that we've developed this is because we've been working quite sensibly together and we've not been fighting too much and now Macau's gonna have a little look down the right hand side we're going to get the slipstream from Turismo. Do we go for a move? It's time to start fighting now. We've got quite a nice gap to the cars behind. So we're going to see if we can go around the outside there. A little bit of a tap there. Mikhail's going to go up the inside. And we're going to try and hold around the outside. Just about keeping it in the, in the limits there. And Mikhail takes that P2. But are we going to give this up? Should we go for a send? Let's have a little look. We go up the inside of Mikhail. We break as late as we can. But try and keep it very tight to the apex. Side by side with Mikhail. Good race in here. Mikhail's going to get a, probably a slightly stronger exit there of that wider line. And now you can see Mikhail has got the inside to the next corner. So there's no point in me trying to go around the outside there. Now into the next braking zone. Will we have a little look up the inside here? No, we're going to stay to the left and see if we can just get a bit of a better exit from this right-hand corner. And this is now where the fun begins because we can start trying to actually do some racing because we've got the gap is massive to the cars behind. You can see six seconds to P4. That is pretty much plenty of time. We've still got five laps to go. We'd have to lose over a second a lap to really fall back into that group. Plus, we've got the slipstream on the straight, which is just going to pull us again even more and pull that gap out a little bit further. So back into that slipstream in Macau now. Now we've got to try and concentrate on getting a little bit closer to P1 because P1 has actually got that eight temps gap over Macau. You can see Macau's connection every now and then going a little bit wobbly also Trismo and P1 his connection was a little bit dodgy but Mikhail's connection is very often like this he has a few issues with his internet every now and then so again into the bus stop Mikhail makes quite a big mistake there not really hooking it up and that gives me the ability to get right behind him now there is no point trying to overtake on this part of the track because if we try and overtake here by going out of the slipstream all we do is drop back so what we're going to do now is give Mikhail a little bit of a bump draft as we work our way down this straight and this should help us get a little bit closer there to Turismo. So you can see the delta massively decreasing from myself and P1 as we're using that slipstream. And we're not going to fight it too much into this braking zone. You can see I'm just going to stay behind him. No point really fighting too much here. We're going to go to the right hand side of the track. Just make sure that we don't miss that brake point and just slow the car down nice and gradually. Macau goes on the inside. We go on the inside. Use a bit of the grass for a bit of rotation there. And now we're going back into the braking zone. Will Macau go for a move up the inside? He's not going to go for a move there. He's a bit far away. So we're going to skip now to lap six. So yeah, static from there up to the end of lap six. And now let's see if we're going to get some racing going again into the braking zone. We're going to all go free wide here into the braking zone. You see Turismo on the inside, Mikau in the middle and myself on the outside. We've got to be careful with the braking coming from this really wide line. And then as we go into the braking zone, a little bit of a tap off Turismo just clips our rear and just gives us a little bit of a drift moment. But we managed to catch it and we managed to hold on to P2. So just about managed to save that and now into the braking zone will we go up the inside of Mikhail we're not going to be able to send it up to Mikhail from there a bit too far back so we're up to P2 now Mikhail and P1 and Turismo there in P3 and we've got four laps to go in this race so let's see what we can do as we work our way into the next braking zone will Turismo have a little look up the inside he has a little bit of a fake look up the inside I think that's to try and get us to go defensive and then he's going to try and take a slightly wider and a slightly better exit from the corner but just about we managed to hold on run a little bit wide there but just about keep the tires on the track and now we're going into that braking zone this tricky corner where you have to get it nice and tight to the curb and then get on the throttle to try and stay in that slipstream to Mikhail there as Mikhail powers his way onto the straight for the bus stop chicane again so again gaps are pretty even between P1 Mikhail there and P1 
and Turismo, then P3 and myself, around half a second. So we should slowly start creeping back up to Mikhail now as we go into the braking zone using that slipstream. Revving out a little bit too much still. This I can't remember when this was in the week, but I think we realized towards the end part of the week that short shift in this wind and slipstream was much, much better, around about 50, 60% shift. So through the bus stop, much better exit at that time. We actually gain a little bit, I think, there on Macau. And you can see that gap's gonna start coming down as we work our way on the straight into seventh gear and we're back to about half a second. Now we've got Trismo on the inside wheel, Trismo. Have a little look up the inside here. We're gonna take that tight line using a bit of throttle as we go onto the brakes and then just trying to take a nice early apex to get on the throttle nice and you can see we massively gain on Mikhail. Mikhail made a little bit of a mistake there and lost a good three tenths of a second. Now, this part we didn't mean to do this. We go for a massive drift into the corner because we went, we used the inputs, we got the rotation on the car, we went right then left and that started to send the car sideways. Luckily, managed to save that without hitting Mikhail and just pulled a little bit of a drift off there. So a little bit of a show there for Turismo while he's following us. And now we're going to go back into the braking zone and see if we can get back up behind Mikhail to get ourselves in the lead of this race. Now we've got to be quite tactical with this because it's when you want to be in the lead really because you know that they're going to get the slipstream off you. You can see how close this racing is. Turismo there in P3 and you can see the gap to the other drivers is quite a big gap now. So we've got no worries about losing a podium unless we crash. So onto this banked part of the track. Again, coming up to the, the bus stop. Will we be able to get close enough to Mikhail? We're a bit too far away from Mikhail, really, to go for a move into this part of the track. So we're just going to get in that slipstream. You can see Trismo is probably not going to go for a move either into the bus stop because he won't have the slipstream if he tries to go to the left-hand side. So again, he has a little look there, but he's too far back. And again, it's just about trying to keep it smooth. Make sure we don't get a penalty here. Use some of the curb and then get back up into that fifth gear as early as possible. And you can see Mikhail didn't get the best exit there. That's going to give us a nice run now on this straight as we work our way to start lap nine and yeah let's see if we can go for a move so we're getting that slipstream off Mikal. you can see trismo is really close behind me as well he's probably gonna go for a move possibly as well now that we're coming up to the end so we're getting the slipstream off Mikal. trismo goes up the left hand side there we keep the car straight to Mikal, and he's just not gonna lose he's just gonna lose the slipstream because he's got no slip there we're gonna go for a little move up the inside and we get a little tap off Mikhail. Now that was not deliberate. That was just Mikhail's connection going a bit crazy. So you can see it there, going to the left and then suddenly ghosting. And then his car just has a massive moment here where he goes forward, then backwards, side by side. A little bit of um, connection issues for Mikhail. So we'll let him off with that one. Nothing deliberate or by him. That was just pure connection issues. So now we go into the corner through here and you can see that Turismo has got the run from us because I've got damage on that left hand tire and the front bumper where we've hit that invisible wall there's an invisible wall that separates the pit entrance as you come out of it there so you always have to be careful of that so unfortunately we have got a bit of damage going into the final two laps here but luckily you can see that that damage does start to repair just before we get into the braking zone for this right hand corner so although we have dropped back to about four attempts back there we should be able to get back involved with the battle for the win in this race so just trying to make sure we get a good exit here upshift to third gear nice and early and now into that braking zone where you want to get that car rotating into the curb and onto that throttle as early as possible. So using the curb for rotation, onto that throttle as early as possible. And now let's see if we can pull ourselves back up with that slipstream all the way back up to the front. You can see Mikhail has pulled that gap out to one second ahead of ourselves and half a second ahead of P2. However, with the slipstream, we should be able to gain that back and be in back, with, back in with a chance in this race on the final lap. So again, into the bus stop, try and make sure we get a good run through here. You can see the two cars in front of me, both with a little bit of dodgy connection going on there. You can see Mikhail's lagging a little bit and P2's connection doesn't look the best also. So hopefully there won't be any connection issues when we come to catching them up. So we're gonna fast forward on this straight now as we go into the braking zone. Trismo is gonna go for that move round the outside of Mikhail. That's gonna hold them both up and give myself the ability to get nice and close. So we break as late as we can while keeping it nice and smooth onto that throttle take a nice early entry and you can see we've got ourselves right back up to half a second behind turismo now as we go into this final second now turismo again has a little look up the inside that's good for ourselves that's going to leave it open for me to get a little bit closer again a little bit of contact there but that was all racing and now Macau has dropped down to p2 will turismo be able to hold on to that p1 though as Macau tucks back into be into p2 and behind turismo slipstream so this is going to be interesting now. We're three temps behind the leader. Mikhail has a little look up the inside there, but he can't really go for a move. 
We're going to try and get as good exit from this corner as we can. Not really going to be able to get the run from this, although we're going to just have a little look up that inside. Not really going to be able to send it from there. So on the brakes as late as we can, try and get that rotation and on that throttle as early as we can for these final few corners of this race. We're following right behind that slipstream. Now, Mikau has got a good run on Turismo. It looks like it there. He's pulling right up behind him. Will he be able to go for a move? before the bus stop chicane. Will he want to go for a move? Will he want to be leading going onto that back straight? So Mikhail's connection has a little bit of a moment there. Let's hope it all stays stable, stable for the bus stop chicane. So Mikhail goes up the inside and he's actually gonna go for it. He's gonna get himself in the lead. It looks like Trismo breaks a little bit earlier and just tucks behind him because he knows that he's probably gonna be able to get the slipstream. I get a really nice exit from there. Good exit from the second part. And this is going to be very interesting. Who is going to take this win? We're in a very good position here because we've got the double slipstream. We're going to be able to get in that seventh gear nice and early and try and get as much pull out of this corner as possible. So we're going to get in that slipstream. You can see Turismo is going to go over to the right-hand side. Now, Mikau is going to go a little bit to the right as he sees Turismo go to the right. So I see a little bit of an opportunity to keep our right-hand side just about on the yellow line and all the way up to the finishing line. And we managed to take the win there right at the end, sneakily got that win without really leading a lap at all. So a nice little result there. So watch it on the replay. We keep the right hand tire on the yellow line, just about keep it on. So we go to the right. Mikhail moves slightly to the right there, leaves a tiny bit open. We keep that tire just on the yellow line and we make that position and take the win in this daily race. See what a race that was, enjoyable stuff all the way to the end. Hopefully you lot enjoyed that. Do let me know in the comments if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel and hit that like button. Thanks again for watching everyone.